Hello everyone. Welcome to Walk the Talk with Saurabh Sisodia. Today I have a very special guest and trust me it's a dream come true for me. I actually need to pinch myself to have the realization that this is actually happening. So let me introduce him with some special lines. Some actions don't justify your age. These billionaire brothers have changed the face of Indian brokerage. His name means master of knowledge and is imparting the same. He is extremely humble in spite of all the fame. He believes if you can't bet, you can't win. He is none other than Mr. Nitin. Thank you, Nitin, for taking out time for this. I have a lot of questions to ask you, so let's get started. See, lot has been already. Everyone knows Mr. Nitin, the entrepreneur. How you built Zero Da into one of the most successful business ever. But there's very much less out in the open about Mr. Nitin, the trader. So I would like to know how were you as a trader? What was your trading strategies, trading style, and how your trading journey has been? So I stopped trading stocks in 2010. You know when Zero Da started because uh, I think trading and running a business same time is quite distracting. uh but i keep saying that zeroda is probably the biggest trade of my life you know so uh and and i think the way you trade stocks the way you run business is is very similar in a way right as in you need to find your edge your moat and you need to know when to bet and when not to bet or when you're betting when to bet small and when to bet big right so so i think uh, uh running a business and trading is is very similar of sorts Uh, so yeah, so there is a there is a Nitin before 2010, and there is a Nitin after 2010 in terms of trading. Uh, um, you know, after 2010, I think I've said this story a bunch of times. So uh, I started trading uh, in two, in in 97, 98. Uh, this was uh, in uh, in a in an offline mode and in penny stocks. I I got my mom to open an account, and you know, and I was 17 or whatever. and uh, i used to stay around a bunch of marwadi friends and uh, they introduced me to it uh, i think the first talk i bought was some shalimar products or something like that. i don't know i mean it was at 5 paisa it went to 1 rupee and i got very excited and i said you know what it's very easy to make money in the markets and and that got me hooked uh, of sorts so so I, i didn't i didn't really trade derivatives until 2001 because uh, uh, i think futures and nifty futures got introduced in 2001 uh and and then options got introduced but uh options really started taking off only i think around 2006 7 uh so so it was mostly futures uh when when i started off trading uh you know on the um, you know in from 2001 onwards um so the first 4 5 4 years was penny stocks right it was you know it was trying to figure out what's the next penny stock that can do 5 paisa to 1 rupee um i i got lucky a bunch of times then uh, you know i i ended up buying some of these stocks i used to do a lot of day trading as well um uh, which is you know you, you, it was offline so you were sitting behind a dealer and you were trying to tell him you know which stock to buy and sell etc uh i had you know like i was comfortable day trading a bunch of stocks and uh um so yeah so that was really the first 3 4 years of of my trading you know so and uh and then i had saved up some 4 5 lakh rupees uh in in 2001 uh you know when all this dot com bust was happening and i kind of blew it all up in 2 days you know so and you know i was i was very aggressive as a younger self uh so ag- very aggressive as a trader still now uh no i'm 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 i think i'm a lot more sensible now you know so uh when i was uh, i was i was always trying to make uh more money than i you know than i i i could by leveraging uh you know my biggest learning experience of blowing up twice in my life has been so here i'll stop you because you said twice but i know you blew up 2.5 times because that's you say like third time you had some money left with you <laughs> right right yeah it's it's two and a half times right yeah um uh, but yeah so the 2001 blow up was a big blow up because i had borrowed money from people uh so so i didn't lose my own money but i also lost uh, money on which i was owing interest to people so uh it was it was not a good spot to be in so i i, I found myself a job uh so i worked in a call center between 2001 to 2005 
and uh, and that time, you know, I started trading ICICI Direct because they had online platform. Uh, so I used to kind of, you know, do this night shift, come back and sit and trade on my uh, first, first, I think one year, two years, I used to go and trade at SIFI, you know, like this cyber center. And, and then, you know, I got myself a computer and I started trading at home. Um, so this, uh, and that period, you know, I was a lot more conservative, right? And, and that was a time when I had a supplemental income as well, which is, you know, I was, uh, you know, earning a salary. On the on weekends, I used to do multi-level marketing, uh, you know. So, um, so there was a supplemental income, and then I quickly realized that y your odds of winning as a trader significantly increases if you're not dependent on trading for your food, bread, butter, and jam. You know, like trading works really well because it, trading is all about fear and greed, yes. right? And if you're very fearful or very greedy. Um, you know, the odds of winning you know, reduces significantly. And, and my learning was really during my, those three years of working that, uh, you know, like knowing that, you know, when you know that you are not dependent on earning from trading, you are a lot more, you know, you have a lot more freedom, you know, you, are, you have a lot less bias of fear and greed. And uh, which is what kind of helped me, uh, you know, at that time I realized, you know, if I'm gonna continue trading, I will trade because I love trading, but I'm not gonna be in ever in a position in my life where if there is no trading, there is no way, no food and, you know, like no, no food on the table touch. You know, I mean, I, so I, uh, uh, yeah, so 2005, I quit my call center job because I met this gentleman, you know, at the gym, his name was Prakash and, you know, he saw my account you know, performance and he gave me like 25 lakh rupees to trade with. And as soon as he gave that money, I quit. Uh, but then, like I said, you know, I knew that trading cannot be my primary job. So uh, I started this thing called Investments Unlimited. Um, I thought I'll sell financial products and also teach people on stock markets. You know, I mean, this was in 2005. Uh, so I set up an office near Banagata Road. And I mean, that was our first office. And uh, uh, like, you know, some people came, they paid me some little money to learn. Uh, but I also became a subbroker for Reliance Money, right? Because that was my way of saying, you know what, I need some supplemental income uh, for my trading. And uh, so this was around the time Nikhil joined me as well. Uh, Nikhil also started trading very early because he had, now I'm seven years older to Nikhil. And uh, so he also you know, started trading at 16, 17. Um, so, uh, you know, Nikhil started trading and then I quickly realized that Nikhil is a better trader than I am. And uh, because, you know, trading is, a lot of people don't understand, is, is very, uh, it's a very skillful job. It's like, it's like playing music for a living or it's like playing sport for a living. Not, not everyone can trade and, and, you know, I mean, you can trade to get entertained. Like, yeah, I play guitar to get entertained, but I can't go professionally play guitar because I know I'm not good enough to do it, right? So trading is also like that. I mean, there is, you know, you can trade for, entertainment aspect of it uh, 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 and you know and and make some side small income but if you want to live off trading it's it requires a lot of skill and a lot of a lot of times these skills you're born with you know I mean right you cannot just learn from someone and become very skillful in life you know it doesn't really work for uh, at least some walks of life so yeah so 2006 is uh, yeah, you know Nikhil joined and uh, uh, when Nikhil joined and he started doing better as trading, so my focus started saying, you know, what, you know, I was doing more on the sub brokerage thing. You know, I, I used to spend a lot of time online. I, I was uh, like, uh, I used to have pseudo names. Uh, that I know, Sachin. Uh, Sachin was after Zeroda, but before Zeroda, Tarzan, uh, you know, like uh, Phantom. I mean, like with names like this, I had. I was very. Uh, I, I used to run some of the largest Yahoo Messenger groups uh, on 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 trading and markets. Uh, you know, when Orkut was very big, I used to run some really large Orkut communities, um, and uh, and all in my pseudo self, uh, pseudo name, because you know, in a call center, I used to call myself Nathan Hawk, right? And I found it very powerful, right? I found it very powerful that on the phone you can be this this person, whoever you want. Like you know, one day I can get up and be very angry. One day I can be very Decide. One day I can be very aggressive, uh, and and uh, and and that freedom, right, as not being your own name, you know, brings a lot of freedom of sorts. So when I was uh, building these communities, you know, instinctively I thought, you know what, I should not be Nitin Kamath. I had never, 
you know, this was not like a long-term plan with some vision of having a pseudonym, but that helped significantly when we started Zero. I'll tell, you know, later why. But, um, uh, so yeah, so I, 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 right from 2001, 2002, I've always had this whole key of of uh, trying to educate people on markets uh, with no objective, you know, as in, there was never a reason for doing this. It was never done out of saying, you know, what I need to, you know, there is a way to make money, right? As in, you're just passionate about it. As in, you, you love football, you like to sit with a bunch of guys and talk about football, right? As it's like that, you know, and uh, so uh, in 2006, seven, et cetera, I started putting a little more effort around that because Nikhil was also actively trading now. I didn't have to focus as much. And um, uh, so, yeah, so I used to put stalls in different you know, offices, I know, I know how, Cisco, Infosys, Wipro, right? As in, I used to go take, put these Reliance money stalls there and try to open accounts and build relationships. Because at that time, we were doing portfolio advisory as well, right? So, so the idea was someone comes to you, you know, you open a DMAT trading account. Then, you know, you can somehow impress upon this guy to say, you know what, I can also do advisory for you, you know, so, and that time there was no license requirements and all, I mean, this is, you know, we were talking like 2005, 6, 7, you know, so, uh, in 2008, um, uh, you know, the markets fell, right, and we made some money in 2008, and um, uh, I think uh, that's when, you know, I kind of realized that, you know, the money brings freedom in life, right, as in now that you had more money than, you know, I mean, more as in that day's context. Like, you're like, you know, what do you do with this money? And uh, and I always knew that there is an opportunity to be a better brokerage firm, right? Because uh, I had dealt with, I think, 11 different brokers. I had opened accounts, you know, ICICI, Reliance, I mean, way too well. And uh, I mean, like a bunch of guys. And, and after interacting with a lot of these folks, you know, I, I kind of realized, and also interacting with a lot of traders, I realized that there is an opportunity to be a better broker, for very active traders. I mean, you know, Zeroda was not, as an idea was not to be what we are today. I mean, when we started Zeroda, the idea was, you know, you find some, you know, like really hardcore traders and build a community for them, build a platform for them. And uh, and and the and the reason Zeroda could start in 2010 was because, um, you know, NSE launched this trading platform called NSE Now, you know, in 2007 and eight. And that is really what any, because you know, to become a stockbroker, of course you need money to become a member. Uh, but second, you need a trading platform, right? Someone has to build the technology. And and we didn't have any tech skills. And uh, uh, so NSE's trading platform, I think I was potentially, I think that was probably one of the biggest trades of my life you know, when I think about it, because I potentially spotted an arbitrage opportunity, which is if technology is coming for free, which is your trading platform is coming for free, can you go disrupt on pricing, right? So, uh, I mean, these are all trades, really, you know, I mean, if you think about it, right, as in, uh, it's, you know, a lot of people think trading is getting up every morning and buying a stock or buying futures and off. It isn't. I mean, trading is doing whatever, you know, can give you the best return on your time, right? As in, you know, and you know, with, with the least risk as possible, you know, so... So yeah, so the, uh, you know, we spotted this opportunity of, of being able to leverage a free trading platform and disrupt on pricing, right? And, and uh, the second thing we thought, you know, we can do better as Zeroda was, uh, was transparency, right? Because, uh, you know, historically across the world, uh, brokers have been very opaque in the way they work, right? As in, you know, not just brokers, you know, even banks, right? As in, you agree. And the thing you did with brokerage calculator that actually people came to know that these are the charges that can actually happen. So that is, was a very transparent thing. Yeah, no, the thing is, so yeah, so the first thing we put out was this, you know, saying every customer at Zeroda will get the same whatever brokerage charges, right? As in, it's a very, I mean, it sounds like a very simple thing, right? As in, but, uh, but the fact that we transparently could do it. Uh, and the second thing was, by putting that pricing on a web page, it gave me the leverage to come start talking about it. Right? I mean, I started blogging, I started answering people's queries online, because there was nothing to hide, right? Because every customer got the same thing. Uh, and, and that, I think the decision to say, you know what, we will offer just one deal for all our customers was another trade of sorts, right? Because uh, it's it's not even funny how many people have come to me over the last 12 years of Zeroda and said, you know what, I'll give you more money. Will you give me this? You know, I, I'll give you 10 crores in, I'll keep 10 crores in my trading account. Uh, will you give me a relationship manager? I mean, we've said no to any of this, right? As in, and, and that seed of saying no to it 
was another trade, you know, in a sense, right? As in, because otherwise, you know, when you when you run a business, right, there is always this temptation to do everything, right? And and this temptation is a lot more when you are smaller, right? When you are like a young organization, right? It's very tempting to say yes to stuff which can instantly give you more money, right? And 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 not think about the technical debt these decisions can bring along, right? And uh, uh, so. Like I said, you know, I didn't really have the foresight to think that, you know, I, I didn't know these are all going to be the reasons. But I knew back then that if you had multiple deals for multiple customers, you will be forced to not be transparent. Right. I mean, I knew that, but I didn't really understand the the benefits that will come through because of a decision like that. You know, but uh, so, yeah, so we started Zerota with that to, uh, you know, like idea uh, saying low costs and uh, a better pricing of sorts. And um, and then, yeah, and, and then Zerodha's journey has been, you know, like spoken quite a bit. So, uh, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's really, you know, like my trading journey of sorts. So that's quite inspirational. And like you give a, actually quite a detailed answer. There are a lot of few follow-up questions. And like the way you mentioned that there were small, small trades and now you can connect the dots now. Okay, okay. But now was there, you took that opportunity. No, being transparent, but now you can connect the dots that that has actually made zero the what it is today. Uh, but coming to trading, uh, you said that you went bus 2.5 times. And uh, so what, what were your mistakes? What were your learnings from your trades? And what was that something? Okay, I will be a trader like, oh, I won't give up. I will be a trader one day. Yeah, and no, I say this often, you know, there's a very thin line between passion and foolish. Yes. So if it works out, you're called passionate. Yes. If it doesn't, you're called foolish. You know, I mean, really, I was being stupid when I was younger, you know. So, I mean, there is, like, today I, I got extremely lucky in my life to be at the right place, right time, bunch of times. And uh, so today people call me passionate, right? But yes. uh, but it very easily could have not worked, you know, uh, the way it worked for me. Um, the, the reason was because... Uh, I was, as a trader, you know, at least in the early half of my life when I was, I, I kind of blew up, was I was chasing money. The thing is, you know, I've realized by now that in today's world, you need to do, uh, you know, you need to not chase money to get money, you know, so, right, as in, you need to be chasing something else, right, as in the chase has to be some, you know, I'll offer a better product to my customer, I'll keep my customer happy, I'll do this better, whatever money has to come will come. But when you prioritize money over everything else, uh, you know, I haven't seen too many people who made money. Uh, of course, traditional businesses, yes. You know, like, you know, in, in the old age, you had money, you could use that money, leverage it and, you know, build, you know, 10 buildings and put it on rent and make more money and stuff like that, right? Those things have stopped working. As in, in, in today's world, you know, making money has become really hard as a business, right? As in, so, so unless you're offering something that others don't, right? And, uh, you know, it is, it's, it's very tough to really make money survive in the long run. Of course, you can, uh, you know, you can raise VC money and survive for a while. But, but in the long run, if you want to survive as a business 10, 15 years plus, you, you need to figure out something for which someone is going to pay you money. Right? As a trader, also it's the same thing, right? As in, if you, if you get up every morning saying, you know what, I want to make 1,000 rupees today. I want to make 5 lakh rupees this month or whatever. As in, you put these money targets, it's just ridiculous, you know, how many... St- how, how, how many different stupid decisions you take in your life, right? I think, I think the idea of trading also has to be that, uh, you know, I'm going to get up and these are a bunch of things on which I'll take a trade. How much money will happen on this, I don't care, right? But if I can consistently do, you know, I can follow these five, ten rules and if goddess of luck smiles, money will happen, right? Because in trading, like in business, you need to be lucky as well. As in, you know, whoever says you don't need luck and you can just make money of skills, it's it's lame, you know, I mean, it's not possible, you know, so, right, um, you need to be able to be lucky as well. And that's where I said, you know, having a supplemental income is, is significant, because, you know, if you don't have a supplemental income and you, you get up every day saying, you know what, I need to make money of trading, it's, it's very tough. And uh, the, 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 the problem with trading is, you know, unlike business, is you're doing it all alone, right? There is no team, there is, you know, you're locked up in a room. And so psychologically, it's, it's, it's draining, right? Uh, so it's easier in a business because you are a bunch of people and, you know, you, you get to interact, socialize, you know, when, when you're, things are going bad, you can talk to people, each other. You know, I remember like when, you know, on bad days in my trades, trading, you know, 
like banging my head on the wall you know, and stuff like that right as in uh so it's uh i still remember you know like one of the times you know i was up some four or five lakhs uh, and then suddenly i got greedy and i said you know what like my going is tough i'm gonna like double or nothing and i went bought some you know out of the money options and i lost it all and then you know i banged my head on the wall for like like 15 minutes you know like so so yeah so i think i think those were learnings from those stupid times you know of of so today i don't do anything unless i know my maximum worst case outcome right i mean i think that that kind of you know as going through those tough times i think the biggest life lesson i've learned is that is that if you if you know your maximum loss at every point of time you'll be very rational right as in you know you won't take stupid decisions right because i think it's a lot about you know fear and greed it's it's a lot about physiology as well you know for example if you're crossing a road and a car came to you really fast right you know your heart is going to pump more blood and you're going to freeze right and that's how people die right but if you if you could remain rational at that point you would have had enough time to move away from there right and and uh, and fear and greed is same thing you know when you have too much money at stake you be you, you know your heart's pumping more blood so your brain's working lesser so the chance of you being rational is is very less right and and in trading you are exposed to that every single second right as in like every trade you know you're put to test right uh, which is what makes trading very hard right because it's very easy to uh, you know like forget some of these rules and get carried away right you know like next trade oh this seems like you know best trade of my life and i need to you know buy out of the money options to make as much money as possible you know of course you can make it once but you know like i keep talking about this as well saying that making money of buying lotteries is probably easier than trading yes. right because with lottery what happen is you put you know say 10000 rupees and you got say 1 crore rupee lottery you're not going to use 1 crore and buy lotteries out of it right i mean you want to go buy a car or whatever but if you're a trader if you made 1 crore out of a bad trade i mean in the sense you got lucky and you know made a bad trade you will bring that 1 crore to the stock market again right because now you want to trade with this 1 crore and and if you traded the wrong way and made money you will most likely give away that money as well i mean there's a very funny incident i mean it's not really funny it's a sad incident actually it's a, so in in when the markets fell in 2008 you know one of our customer turned you know when i was a sub broker for reliance money uh, he had some 1 and 1/2 lakh rupees uh, you know he bought this out of the money calls became 2 crore rupees overnight right as in you know it was you know before the election result right then okay. that day the election result came the market hit a circuit up so you know there was no trading the next day it again hit a circuit and then it came so so one and a half two lakh rupees became two crores plus he lost all of it in one and a half years like entire two crores plus i think he added five more lakh rupees you know so so trading is like that you know if you don't if you made money the wrong way you most likely are going to give it away anyways right so don't even attempt to make it in the wrong way you know so yeah i don't have bad habits you know so it's it's i mean it's very easy said than done you know so because uh people when it comes to money um people really react very weirdly you know so it's very tough to for people to remain rational uh when money is at stake you know so <laughs> one thing that i would like to summarize is know what you are risking like don't take a trade before knowing the max loss follow the process don't go after the money and yeah i mean, I mean very you know almost seems like what you know some guru ji would say yes. but you know, but, you know, but <laughs> easier said than done easier said than done. so one of the things i did i have done in my life because i know that i you know sometimes get carried away so i have i have buckets right so if i'm you know this this started trade you know even before you know zerada started which is i'll only keep this much money in my trading account because i know one of these days i'll get up and do stupidity so i want to limit my max stupidity on that day right which is which is equal to that money on that day right so so i think uh, like i you know i know a bunch of really good traders and i've seen a very common trend amongst all of us which is very similar which is uh, so sorry I, i'm not calling myself a good trader firstly but i'm saying uh, like which is to say that you know at any point of time realize that you will be stupid at some point yes. right make peace with it that and then figure ways to protect yourself on the days when you do stupid it yes i think complacency also breeds to taking stupid decisions if you're making a lot of money in a quick time you tend to take decisions which you should, wouldn't have taken yeah i mean one is that it could even be in the drawdown right as in you're you're just losing some money and like you know 
your ego comes into play and then you say what well, you know i want to make it all back up really quickly so you say double or nothing you like oh one trade you know what um, it's okay but it's it's that one trade that you do you know uh, where you can get sucked into it and uh, so so yeah so i think uh, it's not something a broker should be telling this but i would say that i mean it's not good for the business in the short term in a way at least but uh, whatever is the money you trade with remove 60 70% of it put it in a bank put in a fixed deposit don't even have an online access to it right you know keep here you know like open a bank account where you can't you know you have to walk into the bank to break that fixed deposit and trade with the rest of the money you know you'll find yourself doing much better uh, as a trader you know so nice nice uh, you also mentioned something that only one person of active traders beat fd returns and so there are two questions why is this number so low and with initiatives such as zero the varsity and so much easy access to knowledge these days if you compare 10 years ago and now do you think in the times to come there will be more successful traders the perspective towards trading community would change okay so when i said trading right so i i meant very active traders right people who are trying to get up every day and trade i i didn't really include investors right so this is just very active trading now same question to you how many sonu nigams do you know out there right i mean saying i mean there there probably 100 100 musicians right uh, or you know maybe 200 cricketers right who are making enough to survive out of cricket uh, so it's it's like that you know it's a law, law of the jungle i mean this is this is not a business where 50% of the people can make money it doesn't work like that i mean uh, right as in i'll just give an example right as in every year the government makes 20000 crores in stt right uh, if you add all other taxes stamp duty etc it's probably 25000 crores okay uh, the entire broking community makes between 25 to 30000 crores so 50000 crores is going away yeah. right so someone is making 50000 crores right that means if all customers together are holding say 300000 crores right so you almost 15% went away to the cost of trading right so uh, now there are institutional guys right i mean people who have some kind of an edge right so they also have to make money right so so in the sense eventually as a as a retail trader a trader you need to realize that the odds are stacked against you right uh, to be able i mean not just retail even institutional traders to be very honest but usually these institutional traders usually you know trade on something where they have some edge right be it speed or be it you know being you know if you have access to a lot of money some kind of opportunities open up which were not there for someone who's got 1 lakh rupee in the account like you know someone who's doing arbitrage right i mean he's making 6 7% a year you know but it's he's making it on leveraged money so technically he's making 15 20% but those those things make sense only if you have a few crores in your account you know i mean it wouldn't make sense for a 1 lakh rupee guy to be sitting and doing arbitrage trades it's not worthwhile to be even able to do it the other problem in india is i think uh you know people try to make a living out of trading with very little money right yes. it's very tough to you know generate 10% a month i know a lot of people claim that they make 5 10% a month it's bullshit you know i mean it's just not twitter i mean like everywhere i mean it's it's uh it's very tough it's very hard to make 5 to 10 i mean of course you can have months where you make 5 to 10% but consistently to be able to make 5 10% a month is is really really hard and becomes harder as the money becomes more you know you could make 5 10% on 1 lakh rupees but making 5 10% on 1 crore is infinitely more harder than being able to make it at 1 lakh rupees so uh, uh so a lot of people assume that you know what i have 1 lakh rupees forget 5 10% you know i've met people who said you know i will make 100% a month i'm like dude what are you smoking you know like you know how 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 we want to make 100% a month so i think the other problem in india is most people who get started trading start with come to markets with the wrong expectations and with very little money right uh, it's 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 really hard you know i mean i think you, you, people have you know one of the reasons i am very vocal about about these things is because people have to come to the markets with the right expectation right they have to come with the expectation saying being able to make more than fixed deposit will put you in the top 1% you know 1% or whatever right so uh, uh, then you know when you come with the right expectation you will take less risk if you take less risk you have more high odds of making money in the long run right so um, so no i don't think it's going to change you know i think whatever education initiatives like i said you know if mark nofla comes and teaches guitar to 1000 people there won't be another mark nofla right so it's you know is most likely not going to be there so 
Education initiative can help you contain risk. It can help you reduce the money mistakes that you make. Uh, but it cannot guarantee how much you can make, right? So there are two, you know, like usually when people come to me and ask, how do I make money? I say, I have no clue how you make money trading, right? But I can tell you what are the money mistakes you can avoid. To not lose. To not, you know, which can, it helps you lose lesser. And how to make money, you know, if you can, avo if you can make less money mistake, the chances of you making money increases. That's, that's really, you know, how trading, et cetera, works, right? As in, you, you know, the idea is to make as little mistakes as possible. And that's something that we are trying hard as a platform to see how we can leverage technology to reduce people's money mistake, right? Um, but yeah, but, but, but it, is, it is really hard <laughs> not trading uh, and making money. In us. So you mentioned that a trader is gifted, right? And you have mentioned many times that Nikhil is kind of the best trader you have ever seen. So what is some one skill that he has that you don't and other traders don't have? Like what makes him the best? Yeah, no, I mean, being very uh, non-emotional about money is very important, right? If you, you know, if you care about your losses, like, you know, like I could be sitting with Nikhil, he could have like a really bad day. There is, it's almost impossible to figure that he's having a bad day, right? So, which is, uh, I'm a little more emotional, you know, I mean, I take... I mean, uh, I'm I'm still like much better than most people I know, but I I do get influenced by you know losses, not 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 gains. You know, gains is like it doesn't even bother me much. You know, so but losses there'll be days you know when there's a loss. You know, if there's a loss, I mean at least when I was to trade actively, uh, I will be emotional of sorts. And Nikhil is absolutely unemotional about it. You know, he he's just looking at it as saying, dude, and I this is absolutely not in my control. And um, uh, so at every time then you are, you know, a lot more rational of sorts and, you know, and that I think is the, is the, is really the key thing. You know, a lot of people think trading is about the next, you know, like this trading strategy that can make money uh, is bullshit. You know? I mean, there is, there is no trading strategy that can, you know, that can make money, you know, so trading strategies come and go. It's more right? about you as a person. And yeah. I mean, how you handle your emotionals, you know, you could have the best algo, you could have the best high frequency trading strategy, but at the end of the day, that strategy is controlled by a human. Right? And if that human is emotional, the strategy is not going to be useful at all, you know, so because he can anytime turn on the switch and turn off the switch, you know, so, uh, so I think, I think that's, that's really uh, uh, the key. I mean, but then this whole spotting opportunities of trading, right? Uh, uh, like even as Zerodha, right, if I look back, uh, a lot of things that worked were gut-based instinctive decisions. These were not, you know, like, you know, per, you know, like where we sat down, we created like, you know, like this whole document saying, let's why the reasons to do this the reasons to not do this and then get a consensus of 10 people to say you know let's do this those are not the ones that have worked follow your heart no but the thing is that's a very vague and broad thing to say uh, uh, but but a lot of uh, you know those instinctive based trades and you know decisions have, have worked very well not just for me, I know a lot of successful entrepreneurs today and when I talk to them usually my questions are around this right saying you know dude what kind of you know what are those important critical moments in the journey and a lot of times a lot of times i realize that uh it was very instinctive it was very gut based and it was not like this planned out you know thoughtful decision of sorts you know so and 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 how do you I increase the odds of finding those gut based decisions that do well i think you need to have absolute core competency in what you do right as in uh, you just need to give enough time and effort. You know, businesses can't be built overnight. You can't become a good trader overnight. You no, know? I mean, it is, it's, it's a five, 10 year process at least, right? You know, so you, it's like, you know, you can't expect, you know, you can't plant a tree and say, you know what, I want fruits from tomorrow. It doesn't work like that, right? And of course, you know, in the last few years, you know, there have been businesses who have suddenly grown and created a lot of value, but uh, very quickly, but... Zero the being the, zero the being the... Not really, you know. Zeroda is, you know, we are 12 years old and uh, uh, 12 years old as a business. Um, and I think Zeroda's journey started when I started trading, which was almost 12, 13 years before Zeroda. So I think Zeroda is a 25 year old business. So I, I, I don't think it is, it's quick, you know. We've been very slow, steady, and, you know, and, and the thing about this whole slow, like, like a tree, right? As in, 
you know, it may not give any fruits for 10 years. And then that year that starts giving, then you know that, you know. So for the 10 years, you need to have patience and keep doing the right thing. So it's, uh, even trading is very similar. You know, you will at some point of time, if you continue to do right things, and if you can survive trading, right? Because nine out of 10 people don't survive trading, right? As in, if you, you trade and you are not making money, either you get bored out of it, or you lose so much that you can't trade, right? So, uh, and then you stop in one, two, three years. You know, most traders stop at the end of three years, you know, and so you, you have not given enough time for yourself to even reach that point where you can start getting those good gut-based decisions, right? So, um, so yeah, so I think, I think, I think it's, it's very important to find ways to be able to survive this as well, you know, so. <laughs> okay, so we are talking about emotions, drawdowns, and I think this is what separates the successful traders from the unsuccessful ones. You as a person, like, how do you keep yourself motivated on a low day? Because I'm sure, like, over the years, there would be phases when things were not working in your direction. So how do you keep yourself motivated? Because I think that is one of your best quality, which I like. And you are very transparent also about it on Twitter and on that. No, no, I, 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 I have... I have days where I get up and say, why am I doing what am I doing? You know, so there is, you know, there is, I'm, you know, just like anyone else. So there are, there are low days. Uh, see, the thing is, today with Zeroda, I've found like a calling. Like, you know, I know why we're doing Zeroda and it's nothing to do with money. You know, I mean, like, right, as in it's about like, you know, the, the whole objective of the business is, is can we help people do better with their money? Can we get more Indians to move away from real estate and gold and, you know, kind of back entrepreneurs? Because if India has to do well, there have to be more entrepreneurs and more wealth creation has to happen in India, right? And, and uh, wealth creation and distribution, right? And so, so, so there is, like, that motivation is what's driving today, right? As in, because incrementally, money has made no difference. You know, I have not personally bought anything for myself in the last three, four years. So, so all this valuation and all this, I mean, means ze nothing really, you know, to be very honest. So, so yeah, so now that you have that, uh, you know, like every day we get up and saying, you know what, us doing this uh, can help in the greater context, right? And, um, uh, and, and yeah, so that, that's, that's really what keeps me motivated now. Uh, uh, but I also worry about it saying that one day, if we have done all these five, 10 things that are on our list of things to do, and there's nothing else to do, I might just get bored, you know, like I say, oh, dude, screw this, you know, like, let me go find something else to do in my life. Or I might just get, you know, I might just feel low saying there's nothing more to do, right? So, so no, I, I'm, I'm, I, I keep questioning this, as in, so it's, uh, uh, but it's, I think it's easier as a business because, you know, today I have like, you know, a bunch of guys in the office who are like family and we talk about this, you know, very openly. But as a trader who's sitting alone and working, I think it's really hard. I think that's a really the hardest part of trading is, you know, you know, because the bubble that you live in where you interact with other traders who are claiming, everyone's claiming, you know, I'm making money. I mean, that's, I mean, if anything, stay away from it. You know? I mean, I, I think, you know, you won't get motivated by, you know, seeing another trading making money. You know, it'll just even frustrate you even more, you know. I mean, as a trader, I don't think you should even be on Twitter, to be very honest. You know, I mean, like, right? you know, because you're going to be in this bubble where, you know, everyone's claiming they're making so much money. And if you're already frustrated, it's going to frustrate you even more. Like, you know, like, uh, I, I, you know, like, I try to work. I mean, I have a really bad genes in terms of my, you know, I can't lose fat. And I look at chocolates, I add weight, okay? So, so I have had this whole goal of going like, you know, like 10 to 12% body fat for I don't know how many years. And, uh, and every time I, I look at someone with a six pack, you know, I'm like, oh, dude, you know, like, <laughs> it's quite frustrating, you know, and suddenly like, should I even work out? I'll never get there and et cetera. So, uh, no, it is, it is, I mean, that was, that was just out of context, but it's very similar as a trader, right? And uh, so, yeah, so I think that way business is easier because a bunch of you are building the business together versus trading where you're most likely going to be alone, you know, so, and, and, and the problem with, you know, with most Indian men, especially is, you know, we don't even talk about this to our families, right? As in, I've never spoken about it. You know, me and Nikhil uh, have spoken about trading, et cetera, but well, I, I could never muster enough courage to go and talk about my losses to my parents, you know, when I was, you know, those this really bad times in my life, there was no way I could have spoken about it to my parents or um, I could never even talk about it to my close friends because I was like, you know, I was always fearful about how they will judge me about it, right? So, um, so yeah, so I think I think as a trader, you need to take care of your 
uh, you know, of, of that aspect of your life very well, you know. So try finding people. Firstly, you know, if you're married, you have parents, your family, just be open about it, I think. You know, it's, it's very, like I said, I couldn't do it. Uh, because I think the best people who have the best interest for you are really your family. You know, they may not understand trading. Ex- yeah, but, at but at mental least emotionally, yeah, you know, so, um, uh, but outside that, try finding people who are genuine and, you know, who, you know, if you're, if you're trying to build a community of traders, you know, try to be around people who are open about it. I mean, no one is making money all the time, right? If someone's claiming they're making money all the time, it's just stay away from that person. It's of no use really, you know, so. Okay, so during the conversation, you mentioned about the body fat percent and I read your post on Twitter, I think, in the lockdown that you gained 7 kgs <laughs> and your goal was to bring your body fat under 15%. So, is that goal achieved? And like, what is your workout routine like? <laughs> I mean, if I was 15%, I would be like, on, on, <laughs> no, like no, I, uh, so the thing is, I have a sweet tooth. Uh, I love my wine and alcohols too, you know, so, uh, and so, yeah, so usually my weekends, you know, like I, I diet from Monday to Thursday, Friday, and then by week, you know, by Saturday morning, I'm like, dude, screw this. I go after the chocolate and then, you know, like by Sunday evening, I'm, you know, I've, I've, I think I've made up for all the, you know, calorie deficit over the week. So, so now I, I find it extremely challenging, especially because I love my food as well. You know, I like, I like good food. I like good chocolates, you know, so, so it, 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 it's hard. I think the lockdown, what happened was, uh, me and Nikhil, we were locked down together and, um, and yeah, so we were getting bored and, you know, like we had nothing to do and, uh, I think we just ate and you know, maybe even drank a little too much during those period, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, so, but, but generally, you know, through my life, I've always played a sport. Um, I used to play quite a bit of basketball when I was younger, uh, you know, in between I hurt my knees and I started cycling. Uh, I love swimming. So I've, I've, so I've always tried to, you know, stay active in some way. So, so now, you know, in the lockdown, I ended up, you know, putting a small little like a two aside hoop you know like in the house so uh, so in the evenings i'm usually listening to a podcast and shooting uh, hoops my wife is a fitness freak of sorts so uh, so she uh, thanks to her i get up every morning at 5:30 and you know i have a one hour workout because i find it like i'm wired for the day if i get my workout in the morning right um, so i you know i i find it very like you know like um, like this whole health aspect of it is also a very crucial thing when you're trading, running a business, you know, because uh, it just gets you started, you know, it just, you know, helps you to be more positive in life, right? As in, because if you're not, you know, you can't be negative and working out, it doesn't work, right? As in, I mean, if a negative will not work out, yes. right? But just, just to be able to get up every morning, run, cycle, do whatever, you know, I mean, uh, it just puts you in the right frame. Now, uh, there is one, you know, uh, feeling fit and one looking fit, Looking fit is all about diet, right? As in, you know, I mean, workout really is not enough. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I mean, I, I think I'll feel fit when I'm at sub 15 percent body fat. You know, I'm around 19, 20 now. So, uh, but, uh, but yeah, but I, uh, I try to play some sport. You know, uh, I used to play basketball. All my younger friends uh, who used to play basketball with me, you know, they've stopped playing basketball. So now I. Uh, you know, I play with like 16, 17 year old kids, you know, <laughs> you know so, uh, but, uh, but, but yeah, so, so I do a bunch of things. There's not one thing that I do, but every morning, 5.30 to 6.30, 6.45, uh, me and my wife work out together as in, which is, you know, HIIT, uh, you know, some of, um, you know, um, like some weightlifting, etc. because I think as you grow older, you lose muscle, you know, you need to maintain your strength, right? Uh, because if you don't maintain your strength, it starts affecting all your other abilities, right? As in, and to maintain strength, I think you need to lift weights. Um, uh, it's really the easiest way to do it. I mean, you can do push-ups, pull-ups, etc., but it gets boring if you're doing just push-ups, pull-ups every day, you know? So, uh, so yeah, so we try to kind of mix different, you know, we have, a tr- I think one of the smarter things I did in my life was to get myself a personal trainer, like, you know, like one and a half, two years back. So he keeps it, you know, very interesting, you know, like he keeps changing the workouts. It's almost like how, why you, everyone, like I, I've, I've realized, you know, I enjoy my day so much more because of a train. It's almost like why you need an investment advisor if you don't know what to do with the money or right? so, uh, it's just uh, the value that people who have experience they bring on the table is, is just incredible. You know, so. so maintain a work life balance. And thank you, Sachin, for the answer. Yes, I called him Mr. Sachin. For those who don't know, uh, Mr. Nitin in his initial days, 
used the pseudonym Sachin and used to call up customers to open an account with broker with Zeroda. And see, Sachin has broken all records. I'm a big fan of Sachin Tendulkar. And like similarly, when it comes to broking, I think there's no one better than you. You've broken all records. Sachin has actively retired. Like, what, when does Nit Mr. Nitin see himself retiring? Because you also mentioned that, okay, I want to do these 10 things. After that, I might get bored. So when do you see yourself retiring or like, what is your retirement plan? Yeah, I mean, you know, when I started off trading, I had, you know, a rupee number in my mind. And I had said, if, if that rupee number is meant, I'll go by, you know, go buy a shack. I love music. So I'll have, have a band play in the shack every evening, you know, have a beer. You know, next to the shack is going to be like this basketball court where I, you know, <laughs> I play basketball during the day, stay myself fit. I mean, it's just a pipe dream, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, you know, I can, I could have done it many years back, you know. I could have. Uh, it's just, I think, I think it's, it's, uh, it's very easy to say versus doing it. Uh, I think once you're used to being busy, I think it's, uh, you know, you need to find something to do mentally that's constantly keeping you busy. So, uh, so with Zeroda itself, see the the thing is. You know, we want to be help build an advisory ecosystem in this country because I think India needs, India has 1,000 plus advisors for 1.3 billion or 1.4 billion people, which is a ridiculous. So we need to, you know, I, I believe that more investment advisors will help become, make more Indians professional. So, so we want to find ways to help build that ecosystem. Uh, two is with Zeroda itself, I think we, we have still a lot more to do where we can help people do better with their money. How do you make help people do better with their money by helping them reduce money mistakes, right? As in, uh, uh, so these two are really on the, on the top of, you know, my, like, list of things to do, right? Uh, so once I've, you know, and each of these two things has, like, five or ten things to do to reach there. Uh, once it's done, I'm, 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 I'm kind of sure that at Zero, there will not be too much left to do, right? And uh, so one of the things that I'm enjoying really quite a bit now uh, has been uh, through Rain Matter, which is our... Uh, you know, which is first it was the fintech fund, you know, where we started helping startups by investing. But what I'm enjoying really quite a bit now is, you know, the foundation. Making a change. I mean, uh, attempting to make a change. Uh, making a change is really hard. Uh, so, yeah, so through the foundation, you know, now that we have decided to give back most of the wealth uh, created, uh, you know, so j just to... Because I think, see, the big, the biggest plan, problem on this planet today is really concentration of wealth, right? I mean, the rich are getting richer, and everyone else is, you know, is getting left behind, right? So, and eventually, right, this will lead to a civil war, right? At, at some point of time... Yeah, we saw that in Sri Lanka happening. Yeah, no, I mean, Sri Lanka is maybe, uh, you know, is a different... No, I'm saying uh, every place in the world, if, if 1% of the people have, you know, control everything... Eventually, the 99 percent have, will have a problem, right? So we'll we'll get up and do something about it. So I think, I think, I think uh, something has to be done about it. So I, I personally think wherever there's wealth concentration, you know, people have to just get up and just distribute it, because incrementally this wealth's not going to do anything for you, right? As in, like, I mean, I mean, of course there are a few people who might have ambitions to, you know, kind of buy an aeroplane and all of that jazz, right? As in, but. Uh, but I don't think in today's world you can really do it. It's actually almost ugly if, you know, if, if there are people who don't have food and you have your private jet on which you fly, right? You, I mean, at least in a country like India. I mean, you're in Switzerland, Norway, and all, you can do it because, you know, like, there's no hungry people, right? In, but in India, to be able to do it is, I think, is, is, is actually almost ugly, you know? So, um, uh, so, uh, so I, think, I, I think in India, I think really, you know, like what most people forget is, uh, 70 crore Indians make less than 100 rupees a day, right? And uh, which is quite, you know, quite sad. You know? so, um, so today, now that, you know, we are in a position to be able to influence uh, and, uh, you know, like, because, you know, we've, we've gotten close to a lot of entrepreneurs. We've gotten close to the government. You know? And there is, there is a way to kind of, you know, maybe create, help create some impact in that aspect. So that's really, you know, uh, and, and, and to top it all, there is this whole climate change problem, right? So, so I mean, some of these things, you know, that we are interacting with some of the profits, not for profits, uh, just those interactions are very exciting to me. And uh, so maybe, you know, if, if, if I run out of things to do at Zeroda, uh, Rain Matter Foundation is where I'll end up you know, spending most of my time in us. Great. So, see, Mr. two ends, you and Nikhil were the backbone of Zeroda, right? But two other people, which I have been impressed as the two case, Kailash on the tech side and Karthik on the educational initiatives. 
so what do you think like how impactful these two people have been in the journey of zeroda and like what zeroda it is today no i mean i don't even call myself backbone or nikhil i mean nikhil's trading has been very important in the beginning but i don't think we both are back i think k is really the the spinal cord of this business you know so you know so if not for him i don't think zeroda would be what we are today uh, i am really the face right you know so if i were to kind of determine my parts uh, uh karthik's you know and what he's done with varsity has been phenomenal um, uh you know there is one thing i remember that when you like mentioned varsity because when you started zero that they were not active traders you wanted to grow that ecosystem and that was the thought process behind starting varsity that i'll educate first and let people come in the market and that has worked very well for zero that yeah no i think like sometimes i wonder if getting people to trade is it good or bad you know so you know like because you know most people are losing money if you know they end up trading and losing money did you really do good or bad right as in so the thing is we want more investors for sure right as in we you know this country needs more people backing entrepreneurs there is no i mean the only way the remaining 70 80 crore indians will get up is if india you know generate so many entrepreneurs and you know that's the only only real solution for this country right so that we want for sure but uh, uh, you know so that's really the objective behind varsity right if you look at varsity the focus is around always been more about helping investors and not really of course we have a futures and options module but but that's not really been the focus the focus was in because i know the traders will do what they want to do then <laughs> they're not going to i mean most traders won't really you know i mean they might read something up but they they will eventually use their brains and you know uh, you know do stuff that they have to do you know so so yeah with varsity the idea was that is to is to get more people to start thinking about money i mean one of the things that karthik is working on right now is is you know we've realized that the best time to influence people about money uh, teach good habits is is really before people have the money itself yes rupee tales i mean no no rupee tales was just a was, no we we were actually attempting to to kind of go after the college kids right uh, because see today what happens right people finish the college uh, they come out they start earning money and they don't know what to do with it right the first thing you do is you see what your parents did or you you see what some of your senior colleagues did or you know in your social circle whatever people are doing right um uh, and and if most of these people generally have bad habits you're going to inculcate those bad habits because you never was thought what is the right thing to do with money so i think i think really the best way to impact people in terms of teaching them about money and about investing etc is really you know high school onwards till college right before they you know the when when someone gets his first salary if he knows he what he has to do with the money uh that's really the best case outcome right so so yeah so we are you know we are working on this thing called as varsity certifications and uh, you know where uh, we are trying to uh you know with the lure of certificate get college kids to kind of because you know college kids want certificates right as in so we're trying to lure people into uh getting certification and learn i mean no money involved and etc so uh and then we're also creating uh educational content for you know younger uh you know like through videos you know for younger the objective there is can you with the pretext of educating kids educate the parents right you know so if if kids in your house start learning yeah. the parents are automatically forced to say you know acknowledge or learn etc right so uh, so yeah so we are we are trying to focus uh, on that aspect of it as well um, but there is also you know there are other people in the business as well you know like venu um, you know venu joined uh, you know us in 2005 6 he is he is also like you know all our processes and operations are really managed by him uh so so and there are so many others in the organization as well so but yeah but uh you know like i said i get a lot of face time but uh if if there is the most credit for where zeroda is today is really i think kalash and, and not really you know any of us you know so great great and that's an amazing initiative on the varsity thing and like make, bringing bringing the ecosystem bigger and making it better one thing you like often quote larry hyde if you don't bet you can't win and if you lose all you cannot bet so how it has helped you in trading and like because you mentioned it many times i i couldn't understand like how is it helping you in trading and in life yeah you know i mean like i said right if you know your maximum loss right up up front your odds of succeeding in that increases significantly right so so this whole if you lose all your chips you can't bet which means that 
every bet you take in your life, you need to know what's the maximum chips you'll lose, right? Uh, and uh, and that works as a trader and as a business as well, right? As, in, as a business also, if you are going to not take bets continuously with new ideas and new products, you're going to become, you know, everyone's going to get disrupted, right? See, one of the reasons why income bets get disrupted is because they don't change fast enough, right? As in, one of the reasons we could start as Zeroda and disrupt this industry or, you know, in the sense, do well was because the incumbents who were there before couldn't adapt as fast as we did. Now, if we stop adapting first, someone else is going to do the same to us. You know, so so it's very important as a business that you're constantly taking bets and improving on all aspects. Right? Uh, so and and it's very important as a trader as well because you know if you're going to trade with one strategy and you know, keep doing the same thing, it's not going to work. Right. And uh, so, yeah, so, so uh, I mean, that's why I think I kind of like that, uh, you know, quote, which is, uh, it's kind of, uh, I think one of the reasons when I look back at my life and, uh, you know, when I try to come up with what has really helped me succeed in my life or, you know, whatever little success I've had till now is, is because I've constantly been betting in my life. Right. And that bet isn't just, bet in terms of taking a trade the bet is also in terms of you know every time you're curious and you want to go learn something it's a bet right uh, you know uh, and every time you 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 you're curious and you learn something you get better as a person right and that has very compounding kind of an effect you know so uh, so yeah so uh, i think i think uh, you need to constantly keep taking bets uh, in life to kind of uh, grow as a person as a trader as a business um, and then if you, if, you know, if every bet, the, the risk is too high, you, 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 I mean, you, you'll potentially not, you know, do well uh, eventually. You know, so. so you mentioned about disruption and you are always the first mover. Like when it comes to discount broking, you actually compel people. People are like, is this even possible? So you have been the first mover. So I want to ask you, like, where do you see the future of trading? Because since you started trading, there will be a lot of changes. So five years down the line, what would be the future of trading according to you? What is something that would disrupt trading yeah. in terms of technology or? No, see, the thing is, I think the next phase, uh, you know, uh, there will be people giving out algorithms to trade, right? So you are not trading yourself. You are either taking your trades as a strategy, you're coding it, and then, you know, it's automatically getting placed. Or someone else is giving a strategy and you subscribe to it. Someone else giving a strategy is almost as good as money management, as in someone else managing your money, right? Uh, so that is all. Anyways, been having, happening. It's a, it's a newer way of happening. Now, this personal trading, instead of manually placing placing it through an algo, uh, it it doesn't really make too much of a difference because at the end of the day, the the turn off and turn on buttons with you, right? So you know, so the algo is gonna behave the way you're gonna behave, you know. So. Uh, but I think I think uh, you know thanks to technology, the the um, you know I think it's going to be more technology first of sorts. Uh, I think one of the good things for this country has been you know I think a government, the regulator has done a phenomenal job in terms of more corporate governance. I mean, like I don't think you know we we speak about it too much. I think one of the reasons why so many new investors have come to the markets is also because they feel safer, right? You know. They think the chances of scams happening is much li less likely today than before, right? So, 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 which potentially means that there could be more Indians coming to the markets uh, with with time. Um, uh, and um, yeah, so I think I think uh, I I think we are like 20, 25 years behind the U.S. in terms of financialization of this country. So I think we'll be in, in the next five, ten years, especially given that the younger crowd is is a lot more. Uh, proactive and they want to do more things with their money. I think uh, in the next five, ten years, there'll be a lot more participation. Uh, there'll be a lot more people talking about finance, money, investing in startups, investing in, in markets, etc. That's great. And thank you, Nitin, for answering all these questions. So now we'll move to the rapid fire round. I'll make it impromptu and it has to be spontaneous. Uh, okay, so let's get started. Have more time or more money? Time. Read a book or watch a movie? Book. Expensive car or expensive watch? Watch. Today, neither. <laughs> no, so, but car, if, if I had to. No. If you could have unlimited supply of one thing, what would it be? Time. <laughs> your favorite vacation place? Maldives. If your life was a movie, who would be the lead actor and what would be the movie be titled? Uh, 
I mean, <laughs> the title is is very cliched. I mean, it, I would it probably be zero to zero the <laughs> so and <laughs> yeah. Well, actor. I mean, I still love Ritik Roshan, uh, but I don't know. I don't like him as much anymore. You know, so <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't know. I can't. I can't really think of actors. You know. I'm, I'm, you have been an inspiration for so many people out there and including me i've been following you up since 2015 and today i'm sitting here with you like it's a dream come true for me but who who has been your inspiration see as a as a business you know i i really look up to pion chenard you know so he's built this business called patagonia it's it's a very conscious capitalist kind of a business right as in where you're not you know every time you grow you are asking questions like grow at what cost you know so so i think i think yeah i think we on chenard in patagonia you know so. if someone wants to find you in bangalore where is most likely to find you at which restaurant which club at my home you know so i mean i'm i'm, I'm not in the office i'm at my home you know, so. <laughs> thank you nitin thank you for taking out time for this i really appreciate it and it was pleasure speaking to you no cheers, no, cheers. thanks for having me thank you. this <laughs>